Well, hey there. Welcome to Management 103. Um, we will not be having any students join us for this recording. Um, and the only student that I have is Nate, and he is um, had to reschedule because of a work commitment. So I'm going to continue with this week's recording. And um, yes, it is Tuesday, the 16th of June. And it is very exciting for me to be in the final week of this class. Um, Nate, I want to thank you for the tremendous work that you are doing with your assignments, your assessments, your discussion. You clearly understand the questions and the content very well. Uh, you are answering things very well. Your grade is looking really good. So I'm super proud of you. So what I'm going to go in, ahead and do is just record this week's session um, and uh, go through uh, the requirements and expectations of your assignments and, um, and then look at some of the content. Today we're talking about... Um, Decision making and strategic planning. Last week we talked specifically about um, decision making and went into depth in that. And this week we're talking about strategic planning, vision, mission, and goals and value statements. And all of those things tie in together. And we're going to take a look at how they do that. So please let me know as soon as you have any questions, just email me or call me. Um, my contact details are in your shell on the home page under instructor bio. Um, and in class schedule. Um, and so, yeah, just let, let me know as soon as you have any issues or concerns um, with the content for this week. So I'm looking forward to wrapping up this week with you. Um, next week, uh, month seven starts, and I'm excited for you to move on to your next class. You've done super well in this class. Um, so, yes, let's take a look at some of the expectations for this week. I am going to share my screen with you. And uh, just go into our class here real quick. And our course. And I'm going to go to week number four. And let's just first take a look at the discussion for the this week and what is required. So this week really centers around strategic planning. I'm very excited to talk to you about strategic planning. It's one of uh, my favorite subjects, one of my favorite tasks as a manager and as a supervisor. And um, it's going to be interesting to read some of your thoughts and what you think strategic planning is, why it's important, why we do it, and how we do it. So here we go. Week four. Um, let's go into the overview here real quick. So our learning objectives for week four, as I said, um, the main theme and topic is strategic, strategic planning. Explain the components of strategic planning. Discuss the purpose of organizational mission, vision, and goal statements. Identify the rela relationship between strategic planning and decision making. Now, this is really the crux of what we're going to get to this week, is how do those two things, strategic planning, as well as your organization's mission, vision, and goal statement, how do those things align? How do they tie in together? How do they work together in a relationship for your organization to be effective um, and efficient? Let's go back and have a look at um, week four's reading and tools. In here, you have all your readings and tools for this week. We're gonna take a look at a couple of examples in here. Um, so, and the ones that we don't get to are the ones that you really need to spend time viewing and reading on your own. Week four discussion is on mission, vision, and goal statement. I beg your pardon, you have a career integration task to do as well. Please do that. So week four is going to center around vision, mission, and goals. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so don't answer these questions until you've listened to my recording and you've done some of the readings and tools um, to get a good background on what vision, mission, and goals for your organization should look like. I just want to read the prompt, make sure we understand what to do um, for this week for your discussion. It says, this week you have watched some videos and read about how to create a mission statement and a vision statement for an organization. Here are two files to help you understand the differences and purpose of a mission statement, vision statement, and goal statement. So have a look at those, okay, before you start this. Then it says, so that's kind of the beginning of the prompt. Now, the real question comes in here. Look at the, the list below of values 
listed by one of the local libraries. So the organization or the institution we're working with is a library. This is their, their values. This list is to help you understand what the library is trying to do and what it would like to do present and future. Using this list of values and using the information from your studies this week, create a mission statement, a vision statement, and a goal statement for the library. Create statements that reflect the core values of this library as you see them. And res research other definitions or examples of mission, vision, and goal statements to help you with these ideas. So you're going to pretend that this is your company, this is your organization, you work for this library, and you need to create a vision statement, a mission statement, and, um, and goal statements. And uh, as we go through our talk today, I'm going to show you a little bit more about what that is, what that looks like, and how to write that. Um, and then you'll, you'll find this fairly easy. Remember that you have to have your initial post done by Wednesday. Um, it needs to be at least 150 words. I would, I would divide the three statements into maybe three little paragraphs. Have two references. Don't forget your references. And then respond to my posts. Um, so that you can get the full grade by the end of the week. Uh, last week, you missed out on some grades because you didn't do reply posts to mine. And so you lost a few points there for your discussion. Moving along to this week's, let's look at the assessment. Once again, um, in your assessment, you have all the readings and tools that you need to be able to answer the questions. So they give you all the information and then you've got questions you need to answer. Some of them are uh, multiple choice and some of them are answers where you've actually got to give a paragraph or a sentence or a response, a written response um, to the question. So assignment four really is go through uh, each question slowly, read carefully, don't try and rush through it and let's see if you can get a really good grade this week for your assessments. Up until this point, you've done pretty well with your assessments for the last um, three weeks. So I'm trusting this one will be pretty much the same. Um, and like I said, I do suspect you'll end this class with a really good grade. Now, week four's assignment, as you've seen with this course, every week has been divided into two topics. So uh, strategic planning and decision-making um, is the topic around this week's assignment. The assignment says, Research articles on topics of strategic planning and decision making. Once again, like I said, we're going to talk more about what strategic planning is, what decision making is, so that you know how to, to write this assignment and you know how to do your research. So based on your research, list the components of strategic planning. So list the components. What are the components of strategic planning? And explain the relationship between strategic planning and decision making. Sorry, I'm just writing something down to remind myself. Um, okay, so we're doing some research on strategic planning. We're going to list the components of strategic planning, explain the relationship between strategic planning and decision making. Now, my question to you is, do we do decision making first? Or we do, do we do strategic planning first? Which one comes first, do you think? Which order? Do, is, there, is there an order? What is the relationship? How do these two function together? Some of the requirements for the assignment is answer the questions using paragraph form. Combine answers. Your combined answers should be at least 500 words. Use a combination of your own ideas and content from the text. Keeping in mind your 80-20% rule, 80% um, of the work needs to be your own, 20% can be quotes and other information and references and citations that you insert into your paper. Um, and they want at least two references and citations. Now, Nate, I want to remind you, have an introductory paragraph, have a conclusion. In other words, end your essay with another paragraph. And remember to have a cover page, number your pages, and have a title. Uh, these are things you left out in your your assignment for last week and you, you lose some points if you don't use those institutional writing guidelines and have a couple of those um, uh, 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 APA type style, uh, APA writing style in your paper. Um, you, get, you do get graded on that. So that's your assignment, your assessment, your discussion for this week. I do see that you have been doing um, your daily checkpoints. 
and keeping up with those. So good job with those. You have one more week, um, trying to get them all done. Uh, those points really help a lot. So I really want to encourage you to get those points um, every day, try and work on those. It really does help uh, at the end of the day. Okay, I am now going to switch gears just a little. So that was what is required for assignments, assessments, and discussion. Don't forget your career integration. And then going to readings and tools, they have it structured like this. They've got strategic planning first, and then they've got the vision mission statements second. Okay, so they've divided the week into those two topics. The vision, mission, and goal statements, you're going to be using that information in writing your discussion. Strategic planning, um, you're going to be in, using in your assignment and, and writing about that in your assignment. But I want to change this around. I want to start with the vision, mission, um, and goals because for every company, this is truly the starting point. So what is the mission of a company? What is the vision of a company? What is the goal of a company? Before you even start a company and start putting it together and start the paperwork and start registering it and start to think about your products and your customers and the marketing, you need to have a vision statement and a mission statement. You need to have some goals for your company so that you know how to plan these things. Because if you don't know what you're actually gonna do, um, what is your values, uh, in your business is your values excellent customer service um, or is your values regarded around wanting to make more money? Uh, what, what is the real value of, of this business and how does it serve others? Um, you've got to know those goals before you even start your company. Now, a vision and missions can change. They are not set in stone. However, they do drive the direction of your company. Now, every company, whether big or small, should have a really good, solid, clear vision statement and mission statement. So let's have a look at this PDF and that's saying, why do we need a vision or a mission statement? And we'll take a look more at what they actually are. And I'm sorry if sometimes my computer lags. <laughs> okay, so why do I need, why does my company need a vision, a mission and vision statement? Okay, this is not a very long document as you can see. So, I'm going to read what is in bold here. First, it's funny how entrepreneurs and employees alike get caught up in the tactical details of their business on a daily basis. But when faced with the ultimate question, why do you do what you do? They seem to freeze up. My theory is that a lot of the meaning behind the company's mission is so feelings-based that we often find it hard to articulate it in the right words. Okay, so that's really what a mission or a vision statement is, is why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we providing a certain service or a certain product? Start working on the, on the mission and vision statements only after you think through why your organization exists. You as the owner or uh, you as the CEO or the founder or the director, there must be, there's a reason why this company exists. Why did someone want to create a company? Um, so you've got to think about that. As you think about the, the company's reasons for being, your goals, the image you want to project, and the people you serve, you begin expanding your definition of what you want your company to be. I find just talking to a business owner asking, why did you start your business? Can yield the seeds of a mission or vision statement. Why use certain words or phrases over and over again? As you think through the brand strategy, certain themes, that consistently emerge will be strong clues to your, mi your mission and vision statement. So in other words, why did you start the company? What is the purpose of this company? You've got to know that in order to know where the company is going, right? You want to, you, that value, that goal is the silver lining throughout your company. So what is a mission statement? So here we go. Your mission statement is a precise definition of what your organization does on a daily basis and what you want to accomplish. It should describe the business you're in and provide a definition of why the organization exists. Try and keep this to one or two sentences in length. For example, mission statements can look like this. For Virgin America, make flying good again. Okay, so these are kind of the slogans as well. 
How about Starbucks? Our mission is to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, and one neighborhood at a time. Um, how about this one, Southwest Airlines? The mission of Southwest Airlines is dedication to the highest quality of customer services, service delivered within a sense of warmth, friendliness, individual pride, and company spirit. All right, and I'm not gonna to read too many others, but you, you get the idea. These are mission statements you often find when you look at companies' websites, um, when you look at, say, their brochures, um, when you're looking for information on the company. Um, these are things you will find written about the company. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting to see what they value and why they started their company. Okay, so <clears throat> articulating the vision, in other words, expressing your vision. I'm just going to read these. Draw on beliefs, mission, and environment of the organization. Describe what you want to see in the future. Be positive and inspiring. Don't assume the system will have the same framework as it does today. Okay, things may change for this business in the future. Be, be open to dramatic modifications to current organization, methodology, teaching techniques, facilities, and so on. Ask yourself, where will my company be in the long term? Okay, so we're talking about the mission, right? And the vision, the vision of the company. Will it be the premier provider of a particular product or service? Will it be the top 10 international players in a particular market? What is the ultimate to be state for my company? Okay, so really, without going into too much more detail here, look at this paragraph at the end. Your mission is what drives you on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, it drives you. How did you start this? Why did you start it? Why are you doing this every day? Okay. It's the reason your product or service is in existence and it defines the why behind the thing you're recreating. So your vision is the end state. What do you ultimately want your company to become and the impact you want to have on your customers and the world? Okay, so the vision is where's this company going? The mission is why, why do we do this? Why did this start? What is, what is, the, what is it about this company that's so special? And the vision is where is this company going? So every company needs to have those basics down first um, before they can even start a company. And if a company doesn't, it's a good idea for the managers and the leaders of the company to sit down and work, figure that out before they continue. Because it really, like I said, it drives the direction of the company and keeps everybody on track. So everybody in your company, from your top CEOs, VPs, supervisors, managers, to the lowliest worker, janitor, cleaner, um, employee in the company should be able to articulate or say back what the vision and mission of your company is. Everyone in the company needs to know what is the mission, why are they doing this, where is this company going? So hopefully that explains mission and vision statements a little. Um, like I said, Nate, if you have any questions, please let me know and um, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, now here are two videos that will help you learn to write a mission statement and a vision statement, okay? Um, so you need to please view those to help you when you do your discussion. So I don't wanna go into creating and writing the vision and mission statement. I really just wanna focus on explaining what they are first. So um, let's go to, yeah. Here's an example of how companies differentiate themselves from the competition. So your mission and vision statement, you need to say how you are different to the competition and what sets your company apart. So let's take a look at this video real quick. Got too many things open up here. That's my computer. You're so the slow. age of me too. You must, and I repeat, you must find a way to show up differently. It's about differentiation. People talk about it all the time, but quite frankly, most folks don't do it very well. Now, let me give you a quick definition. Let's see if I minimize if it'll look a little better. Think of it in this way. It's a benefit or set of benefits. It's a little blurry, so I'm going to keep it on minimize. It distinguishes you from your competition, and most importantly, for which customers are willing to pay. In other words, it's only different if it's relevant to customers. Just because it's a different color doesn't make it different, right? It only matters if it matters to customers. But that's the definition. So big or small, 
Doesn't matter. You can be a Fortune 500 company, you can be an individual one store retailer. You really do indeed need to find a way to an incredibly crowded market to show up differently. It, it can be simple things. It's, it's the flight attendant who comes by and gives a refill on the coffee without asking. You know what? You look up from that because you go, wow. I had that experience in a while. I might come back and find these guys. The, the parking lot attendant. I was in, a, in another city the other day in a rental car, pull into the parking lot, go in to get to the booth, and the guy says, hey, you know, park it anywhere, but you don't want to park over there underneath that tree because right now it's shedding, and when you come out, you won't even be able to see out of your windshield. Okay? It's the hotel who understands that maybe because hotels are pretty much hotels, especially if you're talking about those interstate frequented overnight short stay kind of places that all of us, especially us road warriors have seen out there on the interstate. How do you show up differently if you're one of those business? I mean, they all look the same. Central lobby, wings on both sides, three to five stories, small little pool, two exercise bikes, and you pretty much got it. Recently was traveling out on the interstate system in this great country of ours and had three choices of a place to stop for the night on the on this trip, headed on, doing kind of some road work, talking to various retailers across the country. And so I come upon the American Inn. I don't know how many of you have stayed there before, but they've done something quite unique. Because again, how do I show up differently when everybody's building looks the same? Heck, I'll bet you most of those towns, the same construction the company build them. Well, here's what they do. They focus. Okay, I'm just going to pause, pause the recording for just a second. Okay, let me resume what I was doing. Just had a little interruption. Uh, I do apologize. They, thought, they, thought who, they really thought about who their customer was. The person who's probably getting in there late at night, going to leave early in the morning. What do they want more than anything? A quiet, sound, great night's sleep. That's their focus. Their comment is, your key to a quieter night's sleep, but here they take it a step further. We're quietly winning you over. Of all the amenities you'll enjoy at American Inn, quiet rooms may well be at the top of your list. Every one of our rooms is built with American sound guard construction. Thick masonry brick, heavy drywall, and sound deadening foam divide every room, assuring you a peaceful stay. Now, folks, you think your business is competitive. When it gets down to the way you differentiate yourself is because your cinder blocks are better. Now, that's tough, but that's how you show up differently in a crowded market. What's your cinder block? All right. Very interesting because your mission and your vision statement tells your customers how you are different how you are set apart, why they should buy or stay at your hotel or buy your product or service because your product or service is so different, so unique, so wonderful. The experience is so much better than anywhere else. Um, it is a tough market out there to convince people that what, excuse me, they're experiencing at your company or business is far better than what they experience somewhere else, right? So very interesting video. Okay. I want to go up and take a look at oh, here it is vision and mission statement explained so I'm not going to go through this document in detail but I think you're starting to get the idea of uh, what this is and so very briefly let's take a look at this okay so your vision and your mission statement explained in more detail. I'm not going to go through all the details. So mission statements should be a concise statement of business strategy and development from the customer's perspective. And it should fit with a vision for the business. The mission should answer three questions. Here we go. Number one, what do we do exactly? How do we do it? For whom do we do it? Okay, so what do we do? That is our mission. Why do we do it? How do we do it? For who do we do it? And they go into more detail of that. Okay, here is an example of a mission statement from Bristol Myers Squibb Company, their pharmaceutical company, to discover, develop, and deliver innovative medicines that help patients prevail over serious diseases. Okay, a really good mission statement. Okay, it tells you exactly what they do. So have a look at these, these mission statements before you write yours for your discussion. 
Um, and it's just helpful looking at what other companies' vision and mission statements look like. Um, it gives you an idea how to write one. So how about this one? For uh, ConocoPhillips, their gas and energy, our mission is to, pro is to power civilization. Wow, that's a very powerful mission, to power the entire civilization. Um, how about Nike, to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. Wow, fantastic mission statement. Let's look at some of the vision statements. Remember we talked about the vision, your vision statement, and I just want to see if they go into more detail in here. Um, the vision statement is, is, what is the direction your company is going in the future? So let's look at Amazon. Our vision is to be the Earth's most customer-centric company where customers can find and dis discover anything they might, might want to buy online at the lowest possible prices, right? Isn't that really what Amazon is? It, it explains essentially really what they do. Um, great, how about PepsiCo? Our vision is to put into action through programs and a focus on environmental stewardship, activities to benefit society, and a commitment to build shareholder value by making PepsiCo a truly sustainable country. Okay, so Pepsi, I'm sure you've, you've had Pepsi to drink before, and I know we do get them um, in Africa, Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Um, let's have a look at one more vision statement. The American Society for Prevention of Cruelty to animal, Animals, the ASPCA. Um, it's a nonprofit organization, and it's exactly what they do. They are uh, prevention of cruelty to animals. Look at their vision statement. The vision of the ASPCA is that the United States is a humane community in which all animals are treated with respect and kindness. Okay, very, very good. So here is a chart and a comparison between the mission and the vision statement, okay? Um, I'm not going to read this in detail because you'll have more time to go through this in more detail. So your mission statement, what is it about? This compares what a, a mission statement is about and what a vision statement is about. So basically, a mission statement talks about how you'll get to where you want to be, defines the purpose and primary objectives related to your customer needs and team values. Your vision statement is where you want to be, communicates both the purpose and the values of your business, okay? Uh, you can have a look at, it answers what we do, where we do it, time, way, time frame, it's the present leading to the future. Your vision statement talks about the future. What is the function? What is the change? How to develop one? Um, features of an effective statement. And just, you can read all those details and it can help you write your own vision and uh, mission statements. And, and these give you clear guidelines on what is the difference between the two. Each plays a different role, okay? Um, so as I said in the beginning, the mission statement, once again, to recap, is why are you doing this? Why and how? Okay, the vision statement is where, where is this company going? What is the future vision of this company? What are we building? And what are we working towards? Okay, so some good documents there and uh, resources to take a look at. It'll help you understand the vision, the mission and the goals. Now the goal statement and the value statement, exactly what they say. If, you, if your company requires a goal statement, same thing. What are the goals of the company specifically? And you don't want like 10, you want three, three major goals. Um, values, what is the value of your company? Like the, the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Society, um, their value is to, to for a, a humane community, uh, the protection of animals, right? The uh, teaching, uh, treating animals with respect and kindness. Um, so those are their values. Their values came across in their mission statement is uh, how they care, what they care about. And um, so when you write yours for the library company, I think it was, um, yeah, think about if this was your if this was your business, what do you want to share with customers that makes you unique, that sets you apart, um, that tells them why you're doing this, that tells them why you're better than other companies, and that will entice them and encourage them to want to buy from you because they align and they can associate with your values and um, your values and the core of what your company is should speak to them in a way that makes them, well, I want to buy from that company. 
you know. Um, so the first, if you see a stray animal that's struggling, the first thing you're going to do is take them to the ASPCA because um, you know they care and respect animals and they're going to treat the animals with kindness. Um, and so that's how your company should be. They should be the first thing that comes to mind when people have a need in a certain area. They be like, oh yeah, I need to go there. I need to do that. That's the company that's going to help me. That's they're the ones that really care. And that's what customers want to know. They want to know how much you care, right? Okay, so that is vision, mission, goals, value statements. Um, as I said, Nathan, let me know if there's anything that doesn't make sense, that's unclear. You have some more videos that you can watch over here. These three videos particularly show you how to write the vision and mission statements, and we won't go into that detail, but that's detail that you can go and have a look at um, for as research for your discussion, okay? So I would use that, I would go and uh, watch those videos. I'm now gonna move into the next section uh, um, for this week, and that is strategic planning. All right, so let's start by describing strategic planning. Okay, and why is strategic planning so important? And why did I start with the vision, mission, goals, and values before I started with strategic planning? They have it the other way around in this week's course, but I swapped those around for a reason. Um, I believe it's very difficult to do any sort of strategic planning until you've got the vision, mission, and goals down for your company. That in itself is strategic planning because you're planning the strategy of your company. So when you sit down and do that, you're doing strategic planning. But once you've got those in place, then every other planning you do and everything you implement in your company um, and any other strategic planning you do will be, will be based off of those. You've always got to take a look at your values and your mission and, and, and say to yourself, is what we're doing right now still in line with the mission of this company and with the vision of this company? Are we moving our vision forward or are we getting distracted? Um, and that's very important to keep that into, in focus all the time as you make decisions. Strategic planning really is when you sit down and you start to plan certain um, things in your business that need to be changed, that need to improve, and that need to help your business grow. Um, and, and that should happen on, on a yearly basis. You should have a strategic plan for three years for your company, for a year. You should have a strategic plan every month, every week, every day. Um, so the different types of strategic plans. But strategic planning is when you get your team together and you say, guys, here is the problem and we need to work at a plan how to either fix this problem or we need to come up with better solutions or um, something else we want to implement or some change we want to make or you know, we want to hire new people or let go of people or whatever. It's basically any type of planning. We call it strategic because strategic speaks of strategy. The strategy, what is the strategy that you're going to be using, okay, when you're doing the planning. So here we go. What is strategic planning? Let's see what they say here. Hi, my name is Erica Olson with M3 Planning. Today I'm going to provide you an overview of the strategic planning process. And instead of going through a long, boring list of definitions, we're going to do it with an illustration. So let's get started. We always start with our mission statement, and I have this illustrated as a box because a good mission statement helps clarify what's in and what's out, and most importantly, answers the question why we exist as an organization. Once you've answered that, you then jump to determining where you are now. And we figure out where we are now by looking at data, both externally and internally. What's going on in your industry, in your environment, with your competitors, with your customers? What is your staff saying about what's working and what's not working? What are your partners saying about what they like and what they don't like? And we collect all that information and we synthesize it into our handy little strategic making tool called the SWAT. Yeah, Strengths, we learned about the SWAT already. Opportunities and threats. Strengths, weaknesses, Once we opportunities, have that identified, threats. We use that information as well as our collective thinking to determine where we want to be in the future. Now, you may already have a vision, um, and that vision may just to be updated based on the market information that you just collected, and maybe you're refreshing it, but what's important about the vision is it answers the question, where? Where are we going? And it's really clear to everybody in the organization, because if, not, if it's not clear, you can't create a plan from where we are today to where we want to be in the future. So once you've clarified your vision, your job 
in your planning process is to draw the most direct line or the clearest path from where we are today to where we want to be. And we start by articulating our organization-wide strategies or those things that are our guardrails to keep us on a straight path. Once we have those identified, we then articulate our long-term strategic objectives. Now, there are all kinds of different planning terms. I'm gonna call these long-term strategic objectives to articulate those things that provide a high-level view of items between where we are today and that future state, broken down in a balanced way. Financial, customer, operational excellence, and people. Less than seven of these is always good. Once we have clear long-term strategic objectives, we then identify our short-term goals. I'm defining goals using our acronym SMART. Specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. It's fabulous to have articulated goals that go out multiple years. You can't always do that, but if you can in your planning process, that helps you have a longer-term horizon. So you have goals that are uh, with milestones that are due in year one, year two, year three, you may even go past that for this purpose, let's just say three years. For your first year or the year current that you're in, you're gonna wanna break that down into specific goals at the functional or department level and then at the individual level. So you wanna cascade goals, your corporate goals to departments and then individual contributors. So once you have all of these pieces put together, you have more than likely a really good plan, but no plan is complete if you don't talk about how you're gonna execute it. So let's talk about a couple key items. Everybody in your organizational structure needs to have a clear action plan. He or she needs to know their piece of the overall plan and what they're responsible for for the year or for the quarter. You need to identify when you're going to come together to talk about your strategy and make adjustments and adaptations. Perhaps you'll have quarterly strategy reviews and these might be the months that you might have them. Don't leave your offsite without identifying those dates. Mm -hmm. Recommend that. Pick a system to track your progress. So when you come into these meetings with your goals, everybody has the same documentation and language to talk about how you're doing against your plan. And with that, that's your complete strategic planning process. Very good. <laughs> if you manage a team, you should be using Monday.com. It's a platform to manage any. Okay, so she just, uh, in a very basic way, outlined how you can bring your team together and come up with a strategic plan, right? Based off of your vision and mission, knowing where you're going for the future. So the last step to generate an action plan for departments, teams, and individuals, and I want to go through that one as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi, my name is Erica Wilson. Today we're going to talk about developing and using action plans as part of your strategic planning process. This is a follow-up whiteboard session from uh, How to Develop Smart Goals, so if you haven't checked that out, look at that first. Let's move into what we've got to talk about today, which is action plan development. We've already established our SMART goal, and in this example, we want to realize 10% growth um, in our business coming from the small business market by the end of the year. So that's the goal we set for the organization, or one of them. What do we need to do in order to make that goal happen? Set some action plans and some action items and figure out who's going to do them, how much it's going to cost, and when we're going to get them done. So let's look at that. A pretty simple um, action item to start making this goal happen might be to develop a marketing plan to figure out how we're going to target the small business market. So pretty specific, starts with a verb. Uh, we really know what we want done, we want a marketing plan. Who's going to do it? I'm going to assign this to Beth. What's important about the who, and this happens all the time, we want to have shared responsibilities for things. Maybe Beth and Jim are going to develop a marketing plan. Highly recommend having one lead person who is we can hold accountable and who they can hold accountable themselves as well for getting this item done. So in this case, it's Beth, one person, the lead. When's she going to start this? Let's say we want to start at the beginning of the year, so beginning of 2010. We'd like to see the marketing plan completed by the end of the first quarter or the end of March. 
resources, identifying how much money it's going to take to develop a marketing plan. In this case, we're going to say no dollars because um, Beth is the director of marketing, and that's what she does. So it's just her time, and we make sure she has the time to do that. But as far as hard dollars go, we need a budget for none. Let's go back over here to priority. So assume, of course, there's quite a few more action items that come out of making this whole happen. But we'd like to assign a priority for um, how important is this particular oh, action item in the scheme of things. In this case, let's hypothetically say it's pretty high. Uh, we really need to get the plan in place in order to, in order to start seeing uh, revenue uh, generated from targeting this market. Other options, of course, might be medium or low. Great, great thing uh, to use, especially when the team has a lot, a lot of different priorities going on. So let's fast forward. Uh, let's assume that it's the middle of February and we've got this action plan in place and things are happening and we want to use the action plan to track how we're doing. A couple of, of, of things to use um, to figure out where we are against getting the marketing plan done. One is what percent complete are we against the action item? And two, uh, what's our status? We love, and everybody seems to love the whole red, green, uh, yellow light concept, so we'll talk about how we use those. But first of all, percent complete. So it's uh, February 15th, and let's say Beth told us that she feels like she's about 50% uh, done with, uh, with the marketing plan. Certainly for those of us that are a little bit more quantitative in nature, we like, like how do we know we're 50% done? And, and in this case, we're really asking Beth to tell us how she feels and what percent complete she feels she is against the item. And that's just our recommendation. It's just a gut check. We're not looking for something hard and fast, just how are we doing? What percent complete? So then we go over to the status. Is it on target, not on target, or past due? Well, in this case, uh, since it's not due until the end of March and it's the middle of February, she's about 50% done. I'd say she's on target. She can give herself an on target green light. If, let's say she was maybe 20% due and it's the middle of February, I would, market is not on target, she's a lot of work to do to get that thing done by the end of March. Um, and past due, of course, is if it was past March and the item wasn't done. So really quick, great way to see how we do it against, especially when there's tons of action items. So with that, quick summary, um, we've got our goal and we're aligning our actions to accomplish this goal. We've got clear indication of priority, what we're really doing, who's doing it by when, and how much does it cost. And then when we move into actually using the action plans, we assign two indicators to how we are doing against the action item, um, what percent complete, and red, green, yellow light. And that's developing and using action plans. Awesome. Okay, I think you are starting to get the idea of what strategic planning is all about. It's when your team comes together and they start to set goals in every department um, and, uh, and, and you hold each other accountable and you check in on those goals. You have to, sometimes we have to change our plan. Sometimes we have to restructure the plan because it's not working or we come up with a better plan or we see a snag in the plan and we've got to rework it. And so that's what strategic planning is. It's really brainstorming and really coming up with priorities and goals when you want them done, who's got to get them done and why are we getting them done? Why are they necessary? And this is very important for every team that you have. Um, every department should have its own strategic plan. The entire company as an overall should have a strategic plan for the year. Like I said, for every year, at three years and five years in advance. And then monthly, you need to look at those goals. Um, weekly, everyone needs to have weekly goals and daily goals that work towards getting those plans implemented and done. So that's really what strategic planning is. It's really a lot of fun. Um, it's really a lot of brainstorming and then coming back and seeing how far do we get um, with implementing the stuff that we, we came up that we felt were, were good ideas, right? Um, so let me see. I think that was the only video in terms of that one. Okay, did we have a, did we watch this one? I thought we did. Let me just check. No, I don't think we watched this one. Okay, here we go. A little more on vision.
I mean, don't get confused with these pseudo visions of uh, the corporate world. So forget this kind of visions like uh, as a reliable partner for our customers, we count on innovation, creativity, and consistent customer focus, as well as the top performance in all areas. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, but that is just a bunch of gospel. It means nothing. It doesn't say anything. How does this statement help to differentiate to any other company? It doesn't. Everyone wants to be a reliable partner. Every company wants to be customer focused. And another example of bad visions? <laughs> we work hard to be a company that our shareholders, customers, and society want. Oh, come on. That is boring. <laughs> That's so generic. <laughs> it can be true for almost every company. And here's another. Great vision. We will be the number one in our industry and strive for double digit sales and profit growth over the next five years. What? That's, that's not a vision. Maybe the investors love this statement, but it's not a vision. And what's about the customers, the employees, and partners of this company? Does this statement inspires, uh, energize, or motivates anyone. Oh, no, it doesn't. Sorry, guys, in the corporate world, this kind of vision statements are totally useless. What is a true vision? A true vision. People often get confused with what is the difference between vision and mission. So very briefly, a vision tells where you are going, and a mission tells why your business exists. But don't think too much about these definitions and uh, what is what. It's not that important, at least not for you as an entrepreneur. If you are an entrepreneur running a small business, you should focus on the two major questions. First, why does your business exist? And second, where do you want your business to go? To make it very clear, the first question is by far the most important one. Why does your business exist? I mean, what is the purpose of your company? Generally speaking, there's only one purpose. And no, sorry guys, it's not to earn money. It's to satisfy the needs of customers. Mm. So think about who are your customers? What customers do you focus on? And uh, what does your company do to satisfy the needs of these customers? How does your company help and who does your company help? Now, if we're talking about a vision, think big. Why is your company important? Or at least it will be important in the future. Now let's have a look on some examples of great visions. Our vision is to cure the world of breast cancer. <laughs> That's great. An entrepreneur who is deeply committed to develop a cure for cancer. This guy will surely have little difficulties to attract employees, right? A true vision inspires, energizes, and motivates. Our vision is to provide freedom and independence to people with limited mobility. Right? Our vision is a computer on every desktop and in every home. Well, quite successful. Imagine a world in which every single person is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. The question is, why are these visions so great? These visions are so great because they connect with emotions. These visions show that the entrepreneur or the company strive to solve a meaningful problem. Mm. It's not about money. It's about solving a problem which makes the world a better place, which helps people. And that will inspire other people. They will feel that the vision is important and useful, and that's why they want to support the vision and be part of it as an employee, as a customer, or as a supplier. So my question to you is, 
What's your vision? What problem is your company solving to make the world a better place? Wow. Let's go out of here. Now that is one very inspirational talk that he gave there. Um, he talks about, I even wrote this down. A business solves a problem to make the world a better place. If you can solve people's problems or a problem, then you are definitely going to make the world a better place. And if you can make life better for people, give them a better quality of life, make their lives easier, make their lives better in some way, you will have customers lining up at your doors forever. And I think he really gets to the core and the bottom of what a vision and mission statement is all about. Um, yes, it's about making money for yourself, but your vision and mission statement, you're not talking to yourself. You're telling your customers what you can do for them. What problem can you solve? He says, attach it to an emotion. Attach it to a problem. Um, like you saw with Wikipedia, the problem was there's so much knowledge out there, not everyone has access. They want, they want humanity to have access to all knowledge. That's what Wikipedia does. And, um, and so they're solving a problem. So their vision statement was not about them and was not about how much money they're going to make and how well they're going to do it or what they're going to achieve. It was about what are we doing for our customer? What is the need for our customers that we are solving? How are we solving a problem for them? How are we making the world a better place? And I think that is just a tremendous way to look at how to create a vision or mission statement. Um, I love that. That was, that was super, super, super awesome. Um, I want to see if there was anything else that I maybe left out over here. Okay. Let's take a quick look at the relationship between planning and decision-making. So the vision, mission statement and goals and your values, I told you that that works in tandem with your strategic plan. That's gotta be your focus. And keeping that focus in mind, well, that'll drive your business in the direction you want it to go. Like you look at Amazon, they said they wanna be able for people to buy at a low price, to be able to find anything that they need in one place and provide it at a low cost price. I mean, isn't that been driving Amazon since the beginning? Now, today you can buy almost anything on Amazon. In the beginning, it was just some things, you know, and then they, they went into food and they went into medication and they went into car um, products and, and merchandise. And um, I mean, it's just ridiculous the amount of stuff that is on Amazon. And so the question is where their company has gone, is it in line with the mission and their vision? Absolutely, 100%. They've never deviated or changed from that. That's kept their company going and look at the success that they have built because of that. Right, so a relationship between planning and decision-making. Once again, not a very long article, but it's really important that we understand planning and decision-making are the two most important steps of all managerial functions. Now, we've talked about planning, we've talked about decision-making, but let's have a look at some of um, what this author says here and in this article. Um, planning managerial, so the, what is the definition of planning? Planning managerial functions are where managers are required to establish goals and state the ways and means by which these goals are to be attained. Okay, so you've got to get some goals. How are we going to achieve the goals? Therefore, planning is taken as the foundation for future activities. Or in simple terms, planning is deciding in advance what is to be done. Planning is the thinking before doing. Okay, the thinking before doing. Management every time has to look for planning long range and short range future direction by estimating and evaluating the future behavior of the relevant environment and by determining the enterprise's own desired role. Plans have two basic components, goals and actions. Okay, so what is the goal? What is the action? Goals represent the end state and the targets and results that managers hope to achieve. Action statements represent the means by which an organization goes ahead to attain its goals. Planning is a deliberate and conscious work by means of which managers determine a future course of action for attaining a specific goal. To a manager, to a manager means planning is thinking about what is to be done, who is going to do it, how, 
and when we will do it. Planning also requires thinking about past events and about future opportunities and impeding threats. The planning process finds the organization's strengths and weaknesses. Now remember they use the SWOT, strengths, weaknesses, okay? Um, okay. The definition of decision making. Decision making is the process of identifying a set of feasible alternatives and choosing a course of action from them. Decision making is a part of planning, okay? Got to make decisions as part of your plan. You're planning when is a decision to be made, how is it to be, and then who does it affect, and who do we need to tell, and who does it need to be communicated to? Decision making is an intermediate sized set of activities which begins with identifying problems. We've talked about identifying problems and ends with choice making or decision giving. Management is, the, is constantly influencing the organization's action and decision-making process, which is central to doing it. In decision-making processes, a manager identifies a specific situation, finds the threats and opportunities that it offers. Then a manager must find the value, the available alternatives to tackle with the situation. This is where planning comes in. Okay, the grammar and the punctuation on this article is not very good. <laughs> so I'm doing my best to try and read. I'm surprised that, that we have such, we have um, an article that has so many errors in it. And, and hopefully you, you're picking them up as I go along, which I sh I'm sure you are. So, but anyway, um, it's the message behind the content that I'm trying to get to here. Um, by planning, managers find these alternatives by testing and measuring their effectiveness. They identify the pros and cons of each alternative. After that, the managers must use their decision-making skills for selecting one path of action. Decision-making is the core of planning, isn't it? Because you're really making big decisions. Unless a decision has been made, a plan cannot be implemented in the field. You've actually got to make the decision, decision to, to implement the plan. So we can say the planning and decision-making both are interrelated. Decisions can be made without planning, but planning cannot be done without decision making. That's very interesting. Decisions can be made without planning. You can make, make decisions without having planned it. However, planning cannot be done without decision making because you've got to use decision making skills and tools for planning. Planning can be defined as the process of selecting a future course of action. Decision making defi is defined as the process of selecting a course of action from the alternatives that need to be accurate for the welfare of the organization. Okay, so uh, you can go back and read through that article just a little bit more on, de on the, the definition of planning and the, the definition of decision making. So, uh, hopefully by now, Nate, uh, it makes sense to you, uh, the vision and the mission statements. I think I've explained it pretty clearly. Uh, you should be able to write one. Watch those videos on how to actually create and write them. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what you come up with for the library project. And... Um, Yes, and then your strategic planning. What are the steps of strategic planning? That's going to be interesting for me to read your assignment on that. Um, I look forward to reading all your work. Uh, um, I'm sad that this is the, the last week of our class and it's coming to an end. I hope that you've enjoyed it as, as much as I have enjoyed, you know, um, teaching you about uh, some of these management and business principles. Um, you know, I've used examples from my own life and, um, and I'm sure you've learned from that. And um, you know, in, in all of this, um, just know that, and I've said it in the beginning, being a manager, really, you, you can have all the knowledge in the world, but you can still be a terrible manager. Management is about people. You're working with people. You need to listen to people, try to understand where they're at. You need to listen to their suggestions. You need to listen to their um, opinions and comments because people will tell you what is going wrong. People will tell you, uh, they'll give you suggestions of what they think you should be doing. And you know, you can evaluate those. And sometimes the suggestions, the comments, the feedback that people give you are very valuable. Don't ever negate or think smallly of people's, dis people's um, uh, when they come to you in confidence or they come to you and they tell you something, something that's wrong or something that needs to be corrected. Uh, a manager, you have to learn to really rely on your people and trust that they know what they, you, that you've hired good talents. They know what they're doing and, um, and they'll know how to, to lead your company if you just let them um, do their jobs. 
so we don't want to over micromanage people. We don't want to suffocate them, but also we don't want them to just kind of run wild and do their own thing because that's not good for the business. There must be plans in place. There must be job descriptions. There must be strategic plans. Um, there must be, we must be following the vision and the mission of the company. Everything must be aligned. So I've, en I've enjoyed this, our time tremendously together. And um, I certainly hope that you have. Uh, Nate, I wish you all the best of luck for next month. Um, you can always email me, always text me like you do with any question. Just know that. Um, if you have any questions for this week, please feel free. Don't at any don't feel like you 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 cannot um, uh, reach out to me. Uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, yeah, I look forward to reading everything. And I think that that wraps this up. I hope that it's been enjoyable for you. I want to go back and just recap some of what we did in week one. Week one was all about the organizational structure. You remember that? How organizations are structured um, for effectiveness and how different organizations are structured um, so they can function properly and that not all organizations are, st are structured in the same way. And the structure is how you structure the people in departments around certain job functions. Um, and then week number two, we talked about general management and leadership. And if you remember correctly, we talked about what is the difference between leadership and management. A leader is someone who um, has a lot of vision and is very innovative and moves the company forward, where a manager is very, is, it focuses on processes and on people and making sure systems and, and tasks are running efficiently on a daily basis. So that was an interesting uh, lesson. We talked about decision making in week three and some of the types of decision making strategies we can use. And then in week four, we talked about strategic planning and we've talked about vision, mission and goal statements. And that really is the crux of um, what management principles is all about. Now, I want to go to the home page and I want to read to you the course description. This course is an introduction to the basic principles of management as it applies to formal organizations. And we've talked a lot about organizations. We've used examples of different organizations and a lot of different management principles. Students are introduced to the importance of effective management within organizations. I think we've talked a lot about how to be effective and what is not effective as a manager. The, the traditional management framework is used to provide essential skills in planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling. Okay, so um, that wraps it up. And um, like I said, I wish you the best. And uh, it's, it's been fun. I've truly enjoyed this, Nate. And um, I hope that we'll see each other again soon in another class. Um, and good luck for next month. And do your best this week with your assignments, assessments, and discussion. I'll have them graded on Monday. And um, look forward to chatting to you again soon. Thank you and take care. Bye-bye.